USCHO.com. Welcome to USCHO Edge for Thursday, October 26, 2023. I'm Ed Trefsker alongside Jim Connolly and Dan Rubin. Each week we look at a handful of games and what the betting lines are and what the analysis behind those might be to lead to those lines. And we're going to start out with a nice East-West matchup or a Midwest to East anyway. Number eight, Michigan State at plus 150 comes in to see number three, Boston College, which is the favorite at minus 195. The over-under is six. You know, two teams that are both heading in good directions, even though Boston College uh, fell to Denver on Saturday. I think this BC team is playing good hockey. Um, They, you know, maybe need to tighten things up a little bit uh, on the back end, maybe stay out of the box a little bit, but they're fine. And Michigan state has been playing great hockey. Um, We know what Adam Nightingale has done with this team to get it to a point um, that, that it's national power. So um, when I look at this one, I kind of sit there and say, despite the fact that they're a road dog, um, I don't mind Michigan state because of the value. Um, This is definitely a game that I think it should have been a little bit more, a little bit closer to even. Uh, like a minus 115 on each team would have been fine to me. Um, they're going to give BC the big home ice edge, it seems, and you know probably the historical edge, just the fact that Michigan State hasn't been as experienced in these big games. But um, I don't mind Michigan State in this one. I think part of this line comes from the fact that Michigan State, despite being number eight in the country, hasn't played the same caliber of team as BC. And that's not a knock against Lake Superior State or Air Force or Canisius. It's just, BC has played Denver and and was in a one goal game and they beat Quinnipiac in overtime. So I think when you look at those two wins in a three and one record, plus you're at home, I think that makes BC a good favorite to look at just because they're going to have a little bit more in the tank. I do. I don't think this weekend's going to be a, a sweep for either team. Uh, the question is, does Michigan State win on the road on the first night on a, a short week? That part of it is the part that I don't necessarily think is going to happen. So that's where uh, I like the odds on Michigan State. I also like Boston College as a home team coming off a loss, in, again, in a short week. Uh, the, the part of it that I, or it's not a short week, actually, for, for Michigan State. I think they played Thursday, Friday last week, too. So kind of scratch that, uh, scratch that idea. But I do think the travel aspect of it plays in anytime you're coming on the road. And let's just stay for the record that Ed might have called it Midwest, but it's Michigan. That might as well be the Pacific Northwest to some of us who live inside the, the mass turnpike like me. I, Michigan <laughs> might as well be on another planet for me. Uh, but I also like the over here, over under of six. I think it's well placed. Um, and when I say I like it, I like the placement. I don't like the bet. Uh, I think that's the problem. I think, well, I hate the bet on the over under. Stay away uh, from that one. Perfect. Perfect yeah. number. Perfect four, number. I, four, I don't see four, this two, being four, three, three, two are yeah. all right there. All very viable yeah. in terms of numbers for this well, game. Well, love what the odds, the odds makers, I think, got wise in this matchup. I really do. You know, you've got two, what should be two rookie goaltenders up against each other with similar numbers, Jacob Fowler and Trey Augustine. How much does having uh, a rookie netminder in there, uh, play at this point is it still early enough in the season that you can uh, rattle a guy or maybe get him uh, a little uncomfortable uh, i don't know both of these guys are pretty unflappable players they, they've both got experience playing big games big teams um you know from their from their days before college i i don't think that these are these are you know that are there are there rookie goaltenders that could could get flopped Flapped, I guess. <laughs> Unflappable, flap, flappable. Are they flappable? Maybe. Um, but I, you know, I, 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 I don't see it with these two. Uh, too good, too good of goaltenders. Well, let's look at one that is from Western Massachusetts to Eastern Massachusetts, as number nineteen UMass at plus one forty five visits BU. Boston University is minus one ninety as the favorite. This one also the over under is six. Yeah, this is this is Dan's version of a Midwest team coming east, I guess. Uh, New York, with New York, Amherst, Amherst is New York coming, coming all the way in from on the Pike. So, um, 
Listen, UMass is, has to be feeling it a little bit coming off, uh, you know, a sweep out at Minnesota State. That's a very impressive uh, couple of wins to put together out there. Uh, BU, I, I I wonder where this team's psyche is. Yeah, sure, they scored eight goals on Saturday night at Notre Dame. But before that, they had, you know, lost two straight games uh, to uh, on the road to UNH and, and uh, and Notre Dame. Now they get home. I don't know. Does home ice matter? It has in the past, you know, again, this has been a pretty good place for them. Um, I, this is one I'd probably stay away from, to be honest with you. I, I do see value maybe on UMass. If you love UMass here, Um, you know, reality is, is that the people that are going to love this are going to be in a state, i.e. Massachusetts that can't even bet this game. Um, But if there's, if there's a little bit of extra value there, like if the line moves and it becomes UMass plus 155, 160, I like it more. At 145, I I don't love that one. And the over under of six, it's it's like what Dan said about the BC. It seems like a perfect number to hit. Um, you know, I know that UMass can play good defense and they, they were in a one nothing game last weekend. Um, but I think that's a very different team. You're talking about Minnesota state versus the high powered offense of BU. So uh, I think that I could see this one being a, a two, one game. I could see it being a seven, five game. Positively hate this game for a number of reasons. Um, and, and I hate this game because there is every part of my fiber and my being that says BU should win this. And the based on, based on paper and what we thought about BU, we thought about UMass coming into the season. Look, I thought UMass was going to be better than they were last year. But I also thought BU was the number one team in the country. And early season returns have kind of regressed the teams to a median against one another, which is that UMass is hitting this at a time of year when they've been playing really well. And we don't know if UMass is going to finish the year being as good as they were last week against Minnesota State. We also don't know if BU is going to finish the year as badly as they've started. And and I think there are problems with, and, and I asked you this, Jimmy, this week when we did the, the, the Tuesday TMQ, was should we be panicking on BU? I don't know if we're mashing the panic button. If they lose games this weekend, the panic button is going to be mashed with, you know, multiple times over. So especially with North Dakota coming to town next week. So I think this is as close to a must win at home weekend type of game for BU before they turn around and go back to Mullins. But minus 190 as a bet just seems steep for when you're when you're talking about a team having a must win game at home. Like that just doesn't feel like a number I want to touch. Of course, I can't touch it. I wouldn't touch that. I can't touch it anyway. I'm in Massachusetts. Even if I could, I wouldn't. Um, and I wouldn't touch it anyway with my monopoly money. But, you know, UMass, it just doesn't feel like a good game to bet, uh, especially with that over under. It just doesn't, it's not, it, 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 that's a nasty bet. You're betting that one to lose. Of course, we're talking about the first game of the series and not the return trip. If UMass gets a league split out of this weekend, it's got to be good for the Minutemen. Anything less than a sweep has got to make BU feel a, a little bit, a little bit down some more, I would think. I I think BU is is tightening its screws a little bit. I, I think when you look at the way the season has begun, the expectations were so high. That's I think the 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 key component here that anything less than a than a rocket fire start was going to be was going to be a little bit of disappointing. And I think two and two for an average hockey East team, given that they played a very you know improved UNH team and a split with Notre Dame, is it? necessarily a bad start it's just it's a bad start for a team we thought was going to be number one in the country if if you were substituting the two records and said okay UMass is two and two to start the season they 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 lost to UNH but split with Notre Dame and 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 beat Bentley from an Atlantic hockey side you'd be happy but BU is supposed to be much better than that so I think if BU can start to figure out honestly it's back end and and play a little bit more culturally together I, I think they they have the talent to do it but they have to figure out a way very very quickly to to put it together now I'm being hard on them because UMass is playing with the, you know if you'll pardon the pun the house money here and they've played some tough teams and they've gotten to a point where they they just are playing really well right now 
And they and that's a very dangerous prospect against the team that's trying to to fight it. Yeah, I mean, the the one thing I, I will also go back and I think we mentioned this in TMQ is experience matters. And right now, I'm not saying that UMass is absolutely loaded with experience, um, but BU is really inexperienced. You know, last year ten seniors on that team that went to the Frozen Four. Uh, this year, it's a younger team. It's uh, the youngest team in the country, I believe. Um, I don't have the number in front of me, but I know it's one of the, the youngest, if not the youngest. Um, but I I worry just about... I, I guess I need to see this team succeed in really difficult situations. You know, if you're in a one-goal game late, and they really haven't played that. You know, they trailed you, they, you know, trailed UNH, got the lead, lost it, then lost it further, got back in and still, <clears throat> you know, lost the game 6-4. They had a one nothing lead against Notre Dame, but that was in the first period. But by the time you know you looked, it was four one, and then they played you know played an eight two game where they you know dominated. So I I want to see BU in tough games in tough situations. That's what I think we'll see what this team is made of. Well, we're going to stick in the East and take our break before we go to the West. Former UMass assistant and now head coach at Maine in his third season, Ben Barr takes his Black Bears to Quinnipiac for the weekend. Maine's a plus 220, Quinnipiac a minus 298. The over-under on this is five and a half. Yeah, I'm not, I don't, I, I should like Maine here because of the value. Um, I don't know what to expect. You know, they've only played two games to this point. They've won them both. Um, but Quinnipiac, if they're not kind of rattling their cages a little bit after you know, almost losing on Friday, trailing going into the third period. You know, they the final score was five to two. It was not a five two game. They the game was t- tied up with two minutes left, and uh, puck started hopping in the net suddenly for Quinnipiac in the last two minutes. And Saturday, then you'd lose a game uh, in overtime that just was a, you know kind of a strange game. Goaltender, freshman goaltender didn't play well. I do think Quinnipiac is going to probably you know, solidify things and probably make Duplessis their number one goalie. Uh, And if that's the case, he's tough to beat. He's a good goaltender. He's improved since his days at BU. Um, I just think this is a tough situation for Maine to go into. They're walking into a hornet's nest because of the fact that, you know, Quinnipiac is so hungry right now. They know, they know that they can do things better. The one question mark, Colin Graff, Um, he was injured in game one of the year. He re-aggravated that, it seemed, on Saturday night, re-aggravated that leg injury on Saturday night, missed the last half of the game. So if he is healthy, he's, he makes a big difference in that lineup. Uh, his absence would be uh, is something that they really do feel uh, Quinnipiac does. I think Maine, in general, is an intriguing team and was intriguing last year, I think, for, for a while for me. Uh, I... I I kind of have an affinity for Maine. I've been waiting for Maine to be not back. I'm not going to use the term back, but like it's good for it's one of those places that feels good for hockey East. When when Maine is good, things are good, and it, like it feels better for hockey East to kind of decentralize that that Massachusetts being pot central by you know heartbeat by moving outside to a place like Maine where things were great with Jeremy Swayman. And then they kind of had that, I, I, unfortunately, when when Coach Gendron passed away. But, they, you know, now they moved on with with Ben Barr and, and kind of had the the build. Last year was a decent year. I won't say it was a good year. They were great at home. Problem is, this isn't at home. And they're at Quinnipiac, which is a place that I think has to feel a little bit of a pinch this week. Because at three and two, coming out of the loss to, to UNH, having lost to, to BC earlier, like you said, the 5-2 game was not a 5-2 game until late. Uh, Quinnipiac's going to deal with a little bit of the, the chatter that's going to get a little bit louder of, are they in a championship hangover? And as they go through non-conference schedule, being pushed to, to overtime by American International, these are things that they don't have a lot of the same roster from the one that won the title. That's, they, they have a decent chunk, but they, it's not like they returned everybody. But, you know, that, that's going to happen to a team that has it all, that they're going to take a natural step back. For Maine, this is a good weekend for them to come in, maybe punch a team in the mouth and get and get their reputation kind of into the next stage. But for Quinnipiac, if they 
don't want to be the team that slides when the other team rises. They're going to go out and just handle this weekend. And I'm not saying go out and destroy Maine with a pair of snowmans. I'm saying just win the games and make it feel like you are just simply the better team because I don't think there has been that performance yet this year for Quinnipiac going into AC play where no matter what happens in those first two weeks, uh, you know, you, you do play Harvard, but you know, this is going to be the last real chance for them to, to gain some of that, that juju, that mojo before they have to play Cornell at home later in the middle of next month. Well, we'll take a break and look at uh, two matchups going on out West when USCHO edge continues. We're back with more of USCHO Edge. Let's look at a couple of Western games. Wisconsin ranked at number 14, their first time in the top 20 in the USCHO.com men's division one ice hockey poll since October 4th of 2021. The Badgers are at Minnesota, Wisconsin plus 220, Minnesota minus 298. The over under is six. Are the odds makers just kind of screwing with us and, you know, giving us two games at minus 298. So it doesn't look like, oh, minus 300. That's way too big of a favorite. Um, it's like, it's like 99 cents all over again. Uh, I, 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 I like Minnesota in this one. Uh, they're at home. They've been playing well, but do I expect, expect my casings Wisconsin team to give them games both nights? Yes. Um, I know Mike wasn't there last year, but there's a lot of players that were, and they're probably sick of getting beaten in some of these big 10 scenarios. Uh, they'd love to make it uh, pull off an upset, make it a game, you know, obviously playing the number one team in the nation on the road. That's a good feeling, but I think it's a tall task. I think Minnesota is really good. Um, and when they play to their identity, they play their game. Um, that's a tough game uh, over under a six. Again, uh, six is becoming this number that I don't like. There's too many pushes on it, and there's too many options to be sitting there. Three, two, four, three. We've seen too many. A lot of those numbers coming out already this season. Um, so I, I'm not sure. This is there's not a, a lot of value. I, this is another game I'd stay away from. You know, if you want to tease Minnesota with something else, go ahead. You got to find something else to tease it with. Oh, I'm sorry, or parlay, not tease, but parlay. Um, but this is not a ton of value to bet this game straight. No, no, there is not. And and the thing that makes me afraid of of even linking Minnesota into the parlay is that the odds are so long for Minnesota against a team that honestly is has been pretty good. I mean, I know that that we we talk about what Wisconsin has and and what Mike Hastings is providing that team, but five and one nationally ranked. There's a there's a momentum shift to Wisconsin that. Minnesota coming off a super emotional weekend. Uh, that's the, you know, North, North Dakota is, is still North Dakota. They split that, that series, came back and got that, that, or had that win and then had that tight game on Saturday. Like that is a, that is a brutal weekend. And now they're coming back on a Thursday, Friday uh, series at home against a Wisconsin team that's very quietly been playing really well. The, 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 North Dakota, 2 nothing loss. Didn't feel like it was a bad game. We know the style's going to come out and be strong in the back. The Michigan Tech series up on the road, I felt Michigan Tech was a good team and it was a good test. Now, you, now you're going to put on your big boy pants, so to speak. And I think Wisconsin can take one this weekend. I absolutely do. Uh, even if Minnesota's number one and even if Minnesota is playing as well as they have, I just like Wisconsin for one game to reg- if this were a postseason series, I'd say no, Minnesota. But or a postseason game, I'd absolutely take Minnesota. But I like Wisconsin to take one. I'll even go so far as to say at plus two twenty, I would really like Wisconsin in this game. Maybe parlayed with the with Quinnipiac if you based off of what we were just saying about Quinnipiac and kind of combine the two. Um, Minnesota fans aren't going to like me saying that, but you know I really like Wisconsin in this matchup. I hate the over under. I hate six. I hate five and a half in general. But you know, Wisconsin just kind of feels like they get surprised some people this weekend. I don't, I, I don't think they're going to sweep, but I think they might take that first game. Our final game is Minnesota State. They're a plus 140 at North Dakota, minus 180. The over-under is five and a half. Just looking at this one from my amateur betting eyes, this seems like a closer line than I would have expected. 
I was just thinking that, Ed, um, you, you kind of stole the, the words right out of my mouth. I thought that if any game was going to be closer to like a, a minus 300, it would be North Dakota here. Um, they've been playing well <clears throat> of late, um, you know, had that hiccup against uh, the number one team in the country. Anybody can have a hiccup against them. Um, the only thing is they're not scoring a ton of goals. That's maybe the the one reason that I guess you, you can put that in. Um, but Minnesota State, you know, I think that I had lower lower expectations for them. I don't think I'm alone in that coming into this season. Um, they played a couple of really good games out of the gate. Um, you know, the sweep of St. Cloud State looked fantastic. Um, and then UMass comes to town and, um, you know, hanging a 6-3 uh, win uh, or loss, I guess, on on Minnesota State. And then that one nothing game. Uh, last Saturday, I, if this was in Minnesota State, I could see this line being more, more apt. But I, I feel like North Dakota. If you ever want to bet North Dakota, this might be some of the best value you get minus one eighty. Um, they're not going to have a lot of value too much this season. Maybe against Denver, uh, maybe against St. Cloud, maybe against Duluth in their own league, you, you'll get some decent value. But this is some of the better value you get. Yeah, and, and you mentioned how they don't score goals in North Dakota, and neither does really Minnesota State. Uh, Minnesota State did have the five goals against uh, St. Cloud in the win. They did lose a 6-3 to three game to, to UMass. And, but you, historically, Minnesota State has been built from the back up, and I understand new coach, you know, a little bit different system. It's not that much of a different system, and it's not that much of different personnel, but I just don't like, uh, I, I might like the under in this one because North Dakota could drop two quick goals or two goals on Minnesota state and then ride this one to a two, one or a three, one type of game, uh, which has, which hits the under, but you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, North Dakota at home against Minnesota state, the worries about Minnesota state are going to stick around until they consistently win some games in a row that are just a weekend, you know, maybe catching St. Cloud at home. Um, and, and with all the emotion of the opening series and opening weekend. So, I think once it, it, you can win one or two games and then you have to settle back in, uh, the season's going to start settling in soon. North Dakota seems like it has settled in. Uh, Minnesota State's going to have going to find out that the road ahead is a little bit more difficult. But at the same time, uh, no, in the last two non-conference games, um, I, I, I'm not saying look ahead. I'm not saying they're looking ahead. No coach looks ahead. No team looks ahead. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, might not be the worst thing in the world for Minnesota State to try and get out of this weekend maybe a little bit more intact and then head into CCHA play and, and try to hit the gas pedal a bit against Ferris State and Bemidji. Because if you try to throw the kitchen sink at North Dakota right now, uh, I think North Dakota's back. I think they are right now. I think they are doing all of those North Dakota type things that make them the number four team in the country. So uh, it's just not a good matchup for Minnesota State right now. Well, with that, we'll wrap up this week's edition of USCHO Edge. For Jim Connolly and Dan Rubin, I'm Ed Trefsker, and we'll see you next week.